Okay guys, so in this unit, we're gonna talk about restrictive lung diseases. So restrictive lung diseases, I want you guys to think of problems getting air into the lungs. So unlike um, in our obstructive defects, um, you know, where the problem was getting air out, indicated by reduction primarily in FEV1, so expiratory flow, in patients with a restrictive defect, we see both reductions in FEV1 and FEC, okay? So the FEV1, FEC ratio is typically normal um, or maybe even a little bit increased. Overall, lung capacity, lung volumes are reduced. The lungs are almost getting smaller. The volume in the lungs is getting smaller. Whereas quite often we're thinking of COPD, right? We have that hyperinflation. The total lung capacity is actually increased. We also see a reduction in the DLCO, diffusion capacity is also decreasing in these conditions, um, particularly for intrinsic condition. Now we'll go over some extrinsic and mechanical restrictive defects like burns or spinal cord injuries and obesity where that's actually normal. Um, but um, in intrinsic conditions like our IPF or sarcoidosis, um, we'll actually see the ability for uh, diffusion of gas impaired, and, and that makes sense because some of the things that change. So again, problems getting air in, problems um, with getting the lungs to fully uh, expand or inflate. We see reductions in minute ventilation, so they, they don't have a lot of um, you know, volume, like the lungs are just smaller. Um, so they're in intrinsic causes, so reduction in um, airway compliance um, due to uh, thickening and scarring of the interstitial tissue and pleura, um, as well as, you know, we have extrinsic causes. So we see reduced chest wall compliance. So intrinsic, it's more the airways and the actual lung tissue, whereas um, extrinsic, extrinsic causes, it's something um, affecting the, the chest wall. So that could be obesity, that could be chest wall deformities like pes um, escabatum, pes cardiatum, burns could be one, trauma, or even certain neuromuscular disease like we, like we mentioned uh, before. The leading cause of mortality for patients with Parkinson's disease, stroke, spinal cord injury are pneumonias, and that's due to these restrictive patterns we see in the lungs. So um, in intrinsic conditions, um, restrictive lung diseases. So like we mentioned in patients with, with COPD, which are is plot number B, again, you know, uh, normally, now we have some, some values here. Um, again, at one second, we should get about 80%, right, of our um, volume out during a forced vital capacity maneuver. So this is an example of someone taking a full breath in and fully breathing out as much as they can for as long as they can moving all the volume out. So typically, um, you know, in a normal, healthy individual, they're able to do that about six seconds. So this is our FVC. So FVC, they get five liters out, right? FVC, and this is a healthy person in A. And then at one second, um, they're able to get four liters out, at, you know, right? And at the, the value of the volume, um, at one second during an FVC maneuver, right, is A, is our FEV1, right? So this, you know, this is that value here, that's FEV1, the force um, excretory volume at one second, FEV1. So normal, you know, this is an example of a normal graph here, at one second, their FEV1 is four, their, their FEC, you know, is five, so FEV1, FEC, four over five is 0.8, that's normal, okay? Whereas in an obstructive defect, right, which is plot B, um, you know, their FEC is actually pretty normal, right? So that's about you know, four-ish liters, right? But at one second, they're at like, you know, two liters, right? So their FEV1 here is two liters. So two over four, yeah, that equals 0.5. So that, you know, we said you know obstructive defects, it's less than 0.7. Okay, less than 0.7 or 0.7. Okay, or you know, that backwards. So less than 0.7. In patients with restrictive defects, right? So we have. C is our restrictive defect. Well, 
at their FVC, they're at about, yeah, let's call that three and a half or three, three and a half. And at one second, they're also at about three and a half or maybe 3.4. So their FVC ratio is actually increased. Um, but th their overall ability to move air is just reduced, right? So again, the pattern's a little bit different. Um, and if we look at in our flow volume curves, again, you know, these things are preserved. We don't see that same scro scooping, but the overall volume is less. Remember, this is our, you know, total lung capacity, right? So, you know, the amount of air we can move in and out of our lungs, they, theirs is reduced as the more and more severe comes. We see a left shifting, of that flow volume curve, which is less and less volume in the lungs. Um, I think the image that that's, describes this is this here, right? So normal, right, again, residual volume is the air remaining in the lungs at the end of a maximal expiration, right? So we fully breathe in and fully breathe out. There's always gonna be a little bit of gas remaining. Um, and again, our vital capacity plus residual volume equals our total lung capacity. Whereas in a patient with an obstructive defect, remember they had that air trapping, residual volumes way increased, right? They're holding on to a lot more air, um, which causes the total lung capacity to, to increase, right? Inspiratory reserve volume is not changed much, but expiratory reserve volume is reduced, big reduction, right? So overall total lung capacity is increased in an obstructive defect, but it's mainly just due to the trapping of air. Now, in a patient with a restrictive defect, everything is reduced, right? Um, we see reduction in residual volume too. Um, we see reduction in tidal volumes, right? Um, and overall reduction, we probably even see a little reduction in vital capacity as well, but everything is reduced proportionally, okay? Um, so again, they have defects, right? Their FAV1 is reduced in a, in a, in a restrictive defect, plot C but so is our FVC. Again, because the lungs are just smaller, they're restrictive. We have problems getting air even into the lungs here, okay? So um, both FEV1 and FVC are decreased in a restrictive defect. Whereas in an obstructive defect, it's primarily FEV1. And again, looking at our flow volume curve, again, just look at the, the, the you know, appreciation for this, the volume changes. So this is, you know, the total lung capacity is just much smaller. Whereas, you know, normal here, about, you know, five or so liters. And then looking at, you know, um, what we have here in our obstructive defect, much you know, even larger, right? Uh, total lung volume. So restrictive patterns, we just see this much, 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 uh, you, know, you know, smaller lung. Now, some intrinsic causes of chronic lung disease, right? Um, so we have idiopathic causes like idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, sarcoidosis. Um, there can be drug-related causes, so vancomycin, uh, amiodarone, even chronic oxygen therapy can cause some, in, some changes to the lungs, um, especially if we washed out a lot of that nitrogen that's supposed to remain in the, in the lungs um, after each breath. There can be occupational causes like as, uh, asbestosis or silicosis, coal miners, uh, pneumoconus. Uh, environmental causes like hypersensitive pneumonitis, we'll talk about that one in a bit. It's a very aggressive fibrotic, uh, fibrolytic disease. There can be autoimmune causes, right? Anything that's gonna cause um, whole cell changes to connective tissue will affect the lungs. Um, so, you know, any, whatever the exposure is, what we often see is this um, disruption and destruction and inflammation and fibrosis to the, the, the alveolar septae, the, the, the lung parenchyma, the lung interstitium, causing this, um, honeycomb appearance in the lung is kind of what we're what we're observing uh, here in this picture right so we have this like honeycombing of the lung right it's just fibrotic um, and smaller so the symptoms are often it's you know, depending on the on the cause can be an insidious onset typically they're going to have dyspnea uh, on exertion a dry cough um, this air hunger this inability to just, just you know meet the demands of, of breathing uh, they'll often have a um, you know crackles in their lungs uh, they'll often have maybe even signs of right heart failure, especially in, in IPF. And again, we'll see these reticular patterns, these diminished lung volumes, the lungs are getting smaller and more fibrosed. Um, ABGs, we'll look at, we'll see hypoxemia, because again, we're just, if our lungs are scarred and there's more stuff, fibro fibrotic tissue at the alveolar capillary interface, 
It's going to impair our ability to exchange gases as well. Um, and we diagnose the type typically by doing a lung biopsy. So we'll send a probe down, clip a little bit, um, and try to figure out what's what's the cause here, because it could be multiple different um, causes to uh, a, a intrinsic restrictive lung disease um, that are um, you know different different prognoses depending on the on the cause. And this is an example of kind of what we see here again, just this thickening of the alveolar uh, septae here. Remember um, when we saw an error, obstructive defect, we saw a much um, a much uh, you know thinner um, example. And here we just see, you know, just you know, the septa here are just overly thick, um, thickened and destroyed. So this is a normal graph, normal plot here, and here is an example of a diseased um, um, alveoli. And looking at our chest X-ray, um, here we have again a normal chest X-ray. We have that sharp costophrenic angle created by our diaphragm. Um, very clear windows. We're able to see our and count our ribs. Um, in a patient with you know, IPF, which is an intrinsic lung disease, we see just these diffuse opacities due to this fibrotic, these fibrotic changes occurring in the lung. So again, it just, they just look, they're smaller. Um, and we have um, you know, a, uh, these, these diffuse changes. And if we look at a chest X-ray, so again, this is that honeycombing we're talking about, right? So here's a normal uh, CT scan of a healthy lung. On the left-hand side, so we see some you know, specks in there—that's you know, vasculature and the hilum. Um, here, in a patient with uh, IPF, we see this honeycomb, the scarring and fibrosis, looking like, which make the lungs look like a honeycomb. That's not a good—that's not a good sign, right? Um, and what you can often even see here, we see a little bit of cardiomegaly, and that's probably likely due to some right uh, ventricular um, cardiomyopathy or dilation. So. Um, some of the more common, one of the more common causes of uh, restrictive lung disease would be idiopathic uh, pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF, IPF, um, which is a chronic restrictive lung disease occurring with no identifiable etiology. It's not like they were exposed to asbestos or drugs or anything like that. We have destruction of the alveolary and capillary network down in the lower airways. Again, damaged bronchioles and damaged alveoli and fibrosis between the alveoli. Remember Fick's principle. If we put more space in between membranes, it impairs diffusion. And typically in the alveolar capillary interface, we're talking about a, a thickness of a cell thick. We, we throw even a little bit in there that's gonna impair what we typically have. So again, um, you know, the, we see some serious some problems here. We see impaired gas exchange, hypoxemia in these patients, okay? And then um, some other causes, uh, sarcoidosis, which is a, a multi-system disease. Um, it, you know, cat occurs a little bit earlier in life. Um, you know, typically cat occurs more in African Americans. Uh, they see it, the same kind of interstitial fibrosis, but it's, it's not. It, we have a known cause. It's these sarcoids, um, which is you know we think is possibly an autoimmune disease. Uh, asbestosis, so being exposed to asbestos, um, creates a restrictive, a chronic restrictive disease. Um, it's typically more affecting the pleura as well, um, and that's actually how we, we distinguish it between other conditions. We see these plaque formations in the pleura as well, and uh, asbestos is actually um, increases the risk for uh, uh, carcinoma um, in the in, in the lungs, well, lung cancer. Uh, silicosis, so that would be exposure to uh, silica. This can be an acute, can be acute as well. So um, for anyone who's ever worked in a pool, so I worked as a lifeguard many, many moons ago, and uh, we would use uh, silica or crystalline um, powder in our filters. We had to always make sure that we wear a very, like, um, you know, good mask. If you breathe that in, it'll destroy your lungs. Um, called diatomaceous earth, actually. Um, so, you know, repeated exposure to silica or these crystalline, you know, uh, fibers can destroy uh, lungs, and actually increase the risk for, for bacterial in infection. And then the other kind of common intrinsic lung disorder uh, would be, a uh, restrictive disorder would be hypersensitive to pneumonitis, which is an ag extremely aggressive fibrolytic um, or fibrogenic uh, condition, which is basically uh, people get exposed to a certain allergen. It could be a uh, bird dander. Um, this is often referred to as bird watcher's flu because um, you know, quite often people observe, get, get this uh, who have birds in their house. And what it ends up uh, developing is, again, this rapid fibro uh, you know, fibrosis of the lungs. And the problem is like uh, most people don't recognize it. 
And uh, unfortunately, it can be treated early on with very high um, dose corticosteroids. Um, but if you get past like the three month stage with, with hypersensitive pneumonitis, uh, it's, it's very, very lethal. The mortality is really high and people end up needing a, a lung transplant. It's, it's a wild, wild condition. I've seen it a couple of times. Patient never smoked, incredibly active, got these new birds um, and developed, ended up developing this and needed to get a, a lung transplantation. Uh, he did pretty well though. Um, so in terms of staging um, intrinsic restrictive lung diseases, um, you know, there is no Bode index uh, like there is with uh, COPD, uh, but we stage it by um, the FVC. So again, remembering that you know, obstructive defects are less than 0.7 for that ratio. Patients with an intrinsic disease because both FVV1 and FVC are reduced, the ratio is either going to be uh, normal, right, because they're both decreasing proportionally, or it might even be increased like we saw in that last the, the first plot of volume time, like they got to about, you know, 3.5 right at one second, right? So it's going to be either normal or, or high. So it might be even a little bit um, above 0.8. Um, their FVC percent predicted will be lower though. And that's how we stage it. So mild conditions, 60 to 80% of FVC um, percent predicted. And then FVC for um, for moderate would be FVC 50 to 60 percent percent predicted, and anything less than 50 percent uh, would be severe. And again, this is percent predicted, right? Not the absolute value. Percent predicted. Remembering that lung volumes are um, predicated upon, or influenced by uh, height. So if you're taller, you typically have bigger lungs. If you're a man, ver uh, male versus female, males typically have bigger lungs than females. Um, and as you age, again, due to normal changes in compliance, um, younger people typically have better lung volumes than, than the elderly. And there, there are some genetic or some um, ethnic influences, but the, the three main determinants are height, uh, age, and uh, biological sex. Um, then six minute walk test, um, there is also some cutoffs here. So people who you know, don't do well or have low functional capacity, um, you know, typically have a poor prognosis. Um, unfortunately for restrictive lung disease, we'll cover this in our pulmonary rehab lecture. There isn't a lot on this population and there really isn't a lot we can do for them either, as, um, except for um, you know, pulmonary rehab and some symptomatic care. And we'll get into this later. Um, so um, yeah, outside of a, like a lung transplant uh, often for these patients, unfortunately. So uh, next we'll get into some uh, mechanical and like other disorders. Um, so these were again, intrinsic disorders, uh, damage to the lung tissue specifically.